we have designed this video to give you some ideas on how to use ChatGPT to generate text and translate them into several languages. It is intended to give you an idea. Call it an overview, a very general idea of what things can be done so that you can think and accomplish more. The first thing I want to say is that it is very important to keep in mind that everything that is uploaded to ChatGPT, ChatGPT can use it to improve its model. So you have to be careful if what we want to improve, what we want to create, has confidential information or has someone's personal data. Because that could cause a problem of leakage of personal data, in fact, or leakage of confidential information. As I was saying, in fact, there are some companies that have banned the use of ChatGPT to their employees because there have been leaks of confidential information. So before using the tool, make sure that there is no confidential information or data that cannot be shared. You can change it for something else, generate what you want and recover it. Well, for doing that, I have here some ideas. For example, we are making a tourist web page about Valencia and we want to make uh, descriptions of several of the attractions that Valencia has. So we could tell ChatGPT to make a description to attract tourists about the church of San Nicolas of Valencia, mentioning that I slipped in the ES here, but it's okay because I will delete it. Mentioning that they call it the Sistine Chapel of Valencia. Well, I'm going to exit the PowerPoint. You are all going to see it. Why? Well, so that I can copy and paste it. And so I don't have to be there because the first thing I want you to see is how ChatGPT generates it from control C. And with Alt tab, I got to the screen and I go here. The address is chat.openai.com. And you have to create an account and you can do it, for example, with a Google account. With a Google account, you can create an account. And then here you will have the history of the things you have been doing so you can recover prompts. Prompts are phrases that you use to ask ChatGPT. You can recover old prompts to use them again. I'm going to copy this one that you have seen here. Okay. And here it's going to start generating. Welcome to the impressive church of San Nicolas in Valencia, known as the Sistine Chapel, this architectural jewel. Well, it's famous for its impressive Gothic architecture. Well, let's go little by little and wait for it to end. That's it. Come and discover it for yourself. We have to go over the text it has given us where we go up here and we can copy it. And here, by clicking here, we can copy it and we have it in text and paste it. Look, this architectural jewel is a must see destination for art and history lovers. When you enter the church, you are captured by the beauty of its Renaissance frescoes that adorn every corner. The magnificent murals painted on its vaults and walls are a masterpiece of religious painting. Vibrant colors is famous for its Gothic architecture is a magnificent Baroque altarpiece. Every carved sculpture and every detail will tell you this has been searched in has it. And if you have not searched the internet, have it in the training data, but should review that everything it says is true. Explore its corridors to learn craftsmanship and so on, etc. Notice that I already have the text, but this could be valid. I will come back here and I will enter again because I already have these searches done. It makes a description in English to attract tourists to the, the Silk Exchange of Valencia, mentioning that it is a World Heritage site. Notice that I could have said that it should only make a description or I can add things that I wanted to mention. Sorry, I skipped on accident. Let's see. And I have it here already searched so I don't have to wait again. So we can look to all the problems I've already done. They're already solved. Look, it makes a description in English to attract tourists to the, the Silk Exchange of Valencia, mentioning that it is a World Heritage Site. Welcome to the, the Silk Exchange of Valencia, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, a true gem of Valencia's cultural heritage. This, well, you have to check that it does not say anything strange, but we already have it in English. We can also say, hey, no, I want it to be shorter. It makes a short description in English to attract tourists. So let's go up here, which I have already looked up. It makes a shorter description in English to attract tourists about the Silk Exchange of Valencia, mentioning that it is a World Heritage Site. Well, the Silk Exchange of Valencia is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is a magnificent example of civil Gothic architecture, this historical building located in the heart of Valencia. So as you see here, there's a smaller paragraph. Okay, with this, we can make a website. And what happens is that we have some text that we have already written in English for the website or else. And we don't know if it has used any expression that in reality, it is not correct in English or we want to improve it. So we have another prompt. We write improve the English of and here in quotation marks, 
and we don't even need quotation marks. We put text to improve, the text to improve. I am going to show you some old ones that I have done around here. Okay, for example, this one, it is one about golf courses, improve the English of... And here I haven't put quotation marks. If you like to play golf, this is a text already written previously with its URL. And then here it tells us the improved text. Okay, we can see if it fits what we want, if it has changed some concept that we did not want, but in general, we can use it without any problem. But as we have this one, we have other previous texts of the same web. For example, this one about the biopark. Improve the English of biopark, etc. That was already written and revised. Well, let's see more things. Imagine that we want to make a specific post with a specific duration for another company. For a dentist blog, for example. So it writes a 200 word description about zygomatic dental implants. We put below, but I also have it already made here. I have an arrow to go to the end. And although it is not the last one I made, let's see. This one here. I specified the extension, that is 200 words. So now I paste it, go to Word, and now I have it here. I paste it with Control V, and I review it, and I ask the number of words it has. Notice that it says 292. Sometimes when you ask for something short, it does not make it as short as we will want, or the number of words or paragraphs aren't handled very well. But well, from here we could remove what we wanted or we could retry it. It is always interesting if we do not obtain exactly what we want to be able to refine the prompt, the phrase that we give it, so that in the end it ends up giving us what we want. Another example, here we already see how we ask it to adapt the tone, adapt how you write the answer, explain Ohm's law to a 15-year-old child. Okay, well, I have that here as well, so we do not have to wait. Explain Ohm's law to a 15-year-old. Of course, Ohm's law is a very important rule in electricity. It tells us how electric current works in a circuit, but don't worry, I can explain it to you in a very simple way. Imagine you have a train track, and the trains are the electrons that carry electricity. Ohm's law tells us that the electric current of the trains is equal to the voltage difference, the force that pushes the trains divided by the resistance how difficult it is for the trains to move. Let's make an example, the battery. Well, we can do it without any problem or for something else completely different. Make a letter in German. I do not have it copied, so I have to do it by hand. Make a letter in German, addressed to the German consulate in Valencia, asking for what are the formalities and what documentation is necessary to provide. I have not tried this one yet. Let's see what it says. I do not speak German very well either so I will not be able to see if it is right or wrong. It is always good to know a little bit of what you are asking for to be able to check it. Okay, but if you know some German, you want to make this letter and you don't want to waste time, we go down here. It is regenerating. It has moved. Okay. And here, I hope they are well. And then he will tell you what you want, what you are asking for. Okay, with friendly regards, so on. Then we copy and paste it. As you can see, we have a very powerful tool to generate text of any type in any language. And with the conditions we want, we can tell him to write it as if he were an expert or to write it for a child. Or if we don't like something, we can ask it to explain it more. Or if it explains it too much, we can ask it to explain it simpler. We can iterate on the concept. And as you have seen, to make a web, to make a blog post, to make a document, to improve the language of something you have written, but not what a translator would do, which is to translate with the right words. But sometimes the translation is not entirely correct because we translate from Spanish to English and maybe some expressions aren't used in English or in German, or we do not control very well said language. ChatGPT fixes it perfectly. With this, we end the video where I have told you a series of prompts to generate text in different languages using ChatGPT.